Interesting question. Why do planets sometimes fail completely to give results of certain events of life? Why does it happen? Have you seen planets in particular houses but not giving any results? Because planets give results of or result of the house where it sits in. And also the results of houses that it lords, right? So if sun and moon are there, then they lord only one house. And Rahu Ketu do not have ownerships, but the other planets, they have two ownerships, right? So why does it happen that certain planets are placed in certain houses, but they are not giving the results in the dashas or whatever you say, transits, dashas or whatever, that, that's up to you. Why does it happen? So, does it mean that the planet was weak? That's why it didn't give results. Or does it mean it was afflicted? Or was there something else in the horoscope? So, that's exactly what we are going to discuss today, right? And please let me know in the comments if you also feel that you had a particular planet in a particular house and you saw a video in YouTube that, oh, this house represents this. And then you are expecting that in the dasha of that planet, this will happen, but it didn't happen, right? So please, please, please let me and everybody else know in the comments. But before that, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up after watching the full video, of course. <laughs> and if you want a consultation from me regarding any area or any event of your life or any planet then please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of where your planets are placed so what's going on a planet is there in your 10th house and there's nothing going on during the dasha of that planet all right so first of all let's clear the the basics right so, you always have to understand. See, I get people who ask me, Sir, I have two planets in my 10th house. Carrier mein kuch nahi ho hai. Nothing is happening in career, right? So, what people magically assume is that you have some planets in some houses and, you know, something will magically happen. Or the other way around. People say, Oh, sir, I have Saturn in 7th house. You know, that's why I'm not getting married. So, there is this intrinsic assumption that a planet, if he's placed in a particular house, will either give you all the good things of life for the rest of eternity or will keep you in hell for the rest of eternity, right? But that's not how it works. So whenever you want to understand the results of a planet, you've got to understand the timing. Timing is very important. Now, how do you time? Very simple. You use the dashas, right? And deshkal patra. So, for example, if a boy is there uh, at the age of seven and his seventh house is activated, then does it mean he will get married at the age of seven? Most likely not, right? So, therefore, just because he's getting a dasha of the seventh house, it doesn't mean he's going to get married. He may get partnerships, you know, with his friends or whatever. But it means something related to the seventh house is happening, but it's not marriage because the Deshkal Patra does not support that, right? So similarly, a person at the age of 85 can get the Dasha of a planet in the seventh house. Does it mean that uh, the person will again remarry or what happens at the age of 85, right? So that that's again unlikely, right? So you have to use Deshkal Patra, of course. And you have to first understand that just because you have a planet or you have a number of planets in a particular house, either good or bad, whatever, that's up to you. But you got to understand that it's not that lifelong, it's like a curse or a blessing. It's not like that. So first understand that whenever the Dasha is active, Mahadasha or Antar Dasha, then you get the results, right? That's the first thing that we need to understand. Now, after that, or rather before that, <laughs> so this is actually step two. 
in step two, you understand when will I get the results? Will I get or will I not get the results, right? But what is step one? Step one is the comprehensive analysis, which most of the people don't like to do. Why? Because it's tough, because it's not easy, because it's not a cake walk, right? What's comprehensive analysis? Comprehensive analysis means that you see all the planets and you try to link them to the events of your life and try to see how is the final picture. So for example, let's talk one event of life, married life. I have seen so many charts where the seventh Lord is exalted or is in own sign or in Multrikon or in some Mahapurush Yoga. That means it's in Kendra or it is in Trikon. Whatever you, you just name it, all the best things, best placements of astrology. Exalted in Navam, so whatever. That's up to you. You can put all the good things. But still people are getting divorced. Yes, exalted seventh lord can also give you divorce, right? But why, 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 why does it do so? Now you will see, oh, seventh lord is exalted. My marriage should have been great. Mm -hmm. No, but somewhere I saw a video in YouTube where that person said, you know, actually, if your seventh lord is exalted, you know, you will have very high expectations in marriage. Or your partner will have too many high expectations. And that is why your marriage will not go. So this is just a poor justification for things which we can't explain. right? But suppose this is happening. Why does this happen? Now, understand what is happening. What has happened? Your marriage has broken. But that's the problem. Marriage is not just seventh house. Right, marriage is the second house. There is fifth house involved, there is ninth house involved, there is eleventh house involved. Right, the seventh house, seventh lord will show the event of wedding. You know, whenever the seventh lord is activated, you know, there can be marriage, or you may get proposals and things may go ahead. Right, but does it show the entire married life? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because suppose, now let's take an example. You got married at the age of 25, right? Seventh Lord in seventh house, own sign or whatever. Seventh Lord exalted, seventh Lord in Digbal. You got activated and you got married. Now imagine after some years, your sixth house is getting activated, which means you have a planet in the sixth or the lord of the sixth house is getting activated. The dasha of the sixth lord has started. This is ABCD of astrology. So then there can be problems in the marriage because the sixth house can show separation due to work or quarrels or fights or whatever, right? So if the sixth lord is activated, or a planet in the sixth is activated because of your dasha. Having an exalted seventh lord may not help much, right? Of course, that will help you, but we it will depend on the chart. Now, marriage alone is not seventh house. Second house is involved. Now, what is second house? Second house is the family, right? Family means your spouse, your parents, your in-laws. Everybody is the second house. Of course, you can say your second house is my family, eighth house is my in-laws. You can say that. That is like a very clear-cut distinction. But in general, second house actually from a Vedic perspective represents everybody. Your, your family, your in-laws and everybody, right? So, now, if your second lord is badly placed, then that can also harm the marriage. Why? Because there may be problems from the family. There may be issues with the in-laws. There may be issues. Uh, your spouse may have issues with your parents, right? There can be interference from relatives. There can be interference. There could be issues pertaining to finances. Second house is also finances, right? There could be issues pertaining to value systems because second house shows value systems, right? So therefore, now what happens? You see my seventh lord is exalted. Okay, uh, but 
why am I having separation? Well, not because that the seventh lord is not exalted, because maybe the second lord is not well placed. So now what is happening? You and your spouse may be very good together, but the problem is the moment you get into a family, you have children or you are with your parents or in-laws, you know, then there is tussle and things don't work anymore. So then maybe because of some reason, uh, you are forced to uh, separate, if not get a divorce, right? You are staying separate. So that is something that you need to understand that there are so many houses involved. So the fifth house, for example, fifth house is the house of children. There are many marriages which break because, you know, one of them want to have a child, the other can't or the other doesn't, right? Or, you know, because of children, there are some financial issues or whatever, something or the other comes in. Then there is ninth house. Ninth house is the commitment and, you know, chastity and all this, right? And then there is the eleventh house, which is the house of fulfillment of desire. So, now what happens is you just see one thing. Oh, I saw in YouTube, you know, seventh house shows marriage. Oh, well, it, it shows the event of wedding, not your whole married life right so now if you got married in the dasha of venus for example or your 11th lord's dasha you got married and adding to that if now you are running the dasha of the sixth lord and you add to that your second lord is badly placed and you add to that your fifth lord is badly placed and you add to that maybe your ninth lord is not well placed so now what happens it becomes very difficult to continue the marriage because marriage as an event is a combination of all these factors. Same with career. You have a planet like sun in the 10th house. Oh, why is my career not uh, shooting up? Why am I not the prime minister of this country? Right? Why am I not the HOD of my department? Why am I not the CEO? Why am I not the chairman of this company? Right? So, there are so many people who have sun in the 10th house, but have you seen everybody uh, being the king? Not really, right? Because their Mercury may not be well placed. What is Mercury? Mercury shows the skill. So it means they have some authority, but there is no skill. So it means they have some position because of some good activities which they did in their past life. Or lifetimes especially and they get some name fame they get some praise right jupiter is praise you know sun is salute you get all this but then you don't have talent so your growth is stunted because beyond a certain extent you cannot expect people to fall at your feet just because you have a position right so now you say oh astrology doesn't work you know sun in 10th house is useless it, it never gives results right now maybe your sun and mercury are well placed but maybe your saturn is not well placed why what's the problem if saturn is not well placed you do not have perseverance you don't have patience you can't do something consistently for a long period of time you can't do things that you don't like Right? So, you only want to do the easy stuff. If Saturn is badly placed in your chart, you love to get the easy things done very fast. And if Saturn is well placed in your chart, you know, then you will want to get the tough things done in the first. Right? So, therefore, you got to understand that you have to understand which are the houses that are associated with a particular event of life? If you do not understand that, you cannot move forward in astrology. If you think one event of life is controlled by only one house, that's very unfortunate. Any event of life, you, you take property purchase. You know How many houses are involved in that? Can you believe it? The fourth house is involved. The 12th house is involved because there is an expenditure. The 11th house is involved because there is a gain. The 6th house is involved if you take a loan. The 8th house is involved if you take a loan from your family. 6th house is loan from government and official legal documents. 8th house is loan from friends, in-laws, families and all this. So can you imagine you count 4, 6, 8, 11, 12. 5 houses are involved. 
and then now you see oh fourth lord is exalted you know i should have the biggest bungalow in the town but it doesn't happen why what about the other planets sir madam i know it's tough but that's what life is because see sometimes yeah you know, if the fourth lord is badly placed a person can have a challenging um, sixth sense in relation to property the person may have a bad sense of you know what is good property but the person might have a lot of money the person might get a loan very easily he might have a very good credit score or whatever right so then you know one house is not very nice but the other houses are nice so then at least he will get some property somewhere right that place or the property may not be very nice because of his lack of judgment but it will be a cakewalk for him because he has a good salary he has a nice credit card score or whatever history shufa like in germany we have but now imagine a person has you know exalted fourth lord venus is in the fourth moon is in the fourth very nice sense of property ah ha kya baat hai but this poor fellow does not have a job the way which bank is going to lend him some uh, loan no bank right they are not there for charity they are they are here to make profits from your loan right so if that itself is not there what's the use of having an exalted fourth lord ha exalted fourth lord can help you to uh, nicely decorate your existing house but it can't give you a career in real estate because real estate is combination of you know buying selling property there are so many houses you know the 10th house third house there is you know uh, licensing contract there is that oh my god such a big industry right real estate so therefore now you see oh my fourth lord is exalted you know it did not give results venus exalted in fourth house sagittarius lagna venus in pisces fourth house oh what it didn't give me any house you know poor venus bad venus then what he will say oh maybe your venus is afflicted maybe your venus is bad in navam so maybe these that oh, my god so many so many fake justifications right so then then this person will start thinking okay which planet is linked to my fourth house maybe fourth lord jupiter will give me something but if the person does not have a good income doesn't matter where his fourth lord is doesn't matter where venus is doesn't matter where moon is doesn't matter where mars is the person will never be able to buy anything by his own efforts now he may get some property from his family that is different he may get inheritance he may get million billion dollars in inheritance but if the person does not have the capacity to earn wealth then how will he get a house right very difficult can happen if there is lottery or something but traditionally it has it's very difficult right or somebody donates something to you right whatever but with your own efforts it's very difficult so then you will say oh fourth lord is not giving results you know the karaka of the fourth house is not giving me any result right who is the karaka venus moon these are karakas mars right mercury then you will say oh they are the culprits fourth lord is not a culprit the planet in the fourth is not the culprit but the other planets are the culprits right so he will spend his whole life finding which planet is the culprit why although he has an exalted venus in his fourth house still why the hell is he not getting married right imagine the despondency that this person will have within right so therefore understand what an event which houses does an event bring together and then do a comprehensive analysis and most importantly understand that the results will come only in dashas okay that will be all from my side ladies and gentlemen and if you like this video please click the thumbs up and share it with your family friends and colleagues or somebody who is wanting to <laughs> see why they have a great planet in one house and then there are no results right and if you want a consultation from me please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of how many exalted or debilitated planets you have thank you